What's up, guys? We are in Matthew 6 in our series on the uh, Sermon on the Mount. And this section is talking about um, storing treasures on earth versus in heaven. So this is Matthew 6, 19 through 24. And it says, Do not lay up for yourselves treasure on earth where moth and rust destroy and where thieves break in and steal. But lay up for yourselves treasures in heaven, where neither moth nor rust destroys, and where thieves do not break in and steal. For where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. The eye is the lamp of the body. So if your eye is healthy, your whole body will be full of light. But if your eye is bad, your whole body will be full of darkness. If then the light in you is darkness, how great is the darkness. No one can serve two masters, for either he will hate the one and love the money, or he will be devoted to the one and despise the other. You cannot serve God and money. So I've read this passage before, um, but this time when I was reading it, what stood out to me was the middle part that said, the eye is the lamp of the body. So if your eye is healthy, your whole body will be full of light. Uh, I do not know what Jesus meant by that. I, I wonder what he meant. Is it like your eye gives off light to the rest of your body? like it creates light or is it like your eye lets in light to the rest of your body um because if then your eye is bad your whole body is full of darkness but then it says if then the light in you is darkness how great is the darkness but light can't be darkness those two things are fundamentally opposite light and dark they can't exist they can't like be the same thing um so i think like, as I'm reading this, I was like, oh, it would be kind of easy to just kind of chalk that up to, like, a Jesus saying. And then be like, ma'am, we, we don't really know what he means. Oh, well. Um, but then <laughs> then Jesus gets real specific. And it's a bummer. Because he says, no one can serve either two masters. Uh, for he will hate the one and love the other. Or he will be devoted to the one and despise the other. And I'm like, all right, Jesus, I'm with you. That is some good preaching. And then he says, you cannot serve both God and money. It's like, oof. I was with you until then. <laughs> um, for me personally, this is one of, the, I think, the most difficult teachings of Jesus. Um, I'd love to sit here and say, eh, I don't really like money, but I would be lying if I said that. I, uh, Money is really important just in general because it's how we survive. Um, it's how we make it through life. Um, but I'm also guilty of living more extravagantly than I need to because it's what's comfortable for me and it's how it's how I fit in to be honest like we live very much in a society of um consumption and of um just like wanting more um for yourself we kind of have this like subliminal society message that the more you have like the safer you are um and as we've seen the past year that's not true at all but there's just kind of this idea that money will help us succeed in life. And my, um, from my senior year of high school to my senior year of college, my dad was unemployed off and on. And so during that season, I was really in charge of providing for myself and money became something to be counted really carefully and to be thought about and honestly to be stressed about a lot. Um, and I, 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 right now, just spend a lot of time in general thinking about money. I am paying bills or paying rent, or I'm looking at the student ministry budget and seeing what we can spend money on, or I'm making a budget for myself um, and seeing what I can spend money on. Um, spoiler alert, it's mostly coffee and food. <laughs> um, and it, it, like, like the amount of time I spend thinking about money oftentimes isn't a, isn't a choice because it's it's just the reality of the world that I live in is that money is something that has to be talked about and thought about um, and planned for. But money exists to serve me. Um, I don't serve money, if that makes sense. I cannot love both God and money because God has commanded me not to love money. Um, and most of you almost all of you aren't in the same stage of life I am. You're not paying rent or a mortgage. Um, you're not paying bills, um, at least I hope not. And some of you may not have a job yet, but 
I think it's possible to not be doing those things um, and, and serve money as a master. Even if you don't have any money, I think that's possible. Because like I said, we live in this country of excess where the subliminal message is just give me more. Um, and if I have more, then I'm better off. Um, and I want like the coolest, nicest, newest things. And listen, I'm 100% not exempt from what I'm saying. I'm literally recording this on my phone. I have my MacBook Pro right here. I have an Apple Watch on. And my iPad and my AirPods are in the next room over. So I'm preaching to myself just as much as I'm preaching to you. Um, and I think, I think we read this and the obvious application is, oh, let me just like give some of my stuff away or let me um, give some of my money away. And I don't think that's bad. I don't think that's bad. I think that's good. I like giving away. I like um, giving away my money or giving away my things. Um, or, you know, giving people gifts when they aren't expecting it. Like, that's something I enjoy doing. But it is still possible for me um, to struggle with this verse and also give things away. Because I think I think giving is a temporary um, solution to, like, the heart of what this is getting at. And which is more of a heart issue or the way our eyes view the world. So, as I was saying, giving is awesome. But if our eyes are the lamp of the body, we are going to have to retrain the way we see things. So here is one thing that I think you can do to start practicing this lesson. I want you to keep track over the course of one day um, how many advertisements you see of any kind. Uh, so this can be you know, something like on the radio, this can be something that pops up on your phone, like on Instagram or TikTok. Um, this could be even like other people's clothings or clothings, clothing, or like on their backpack or something, if they have like a branded uh, shirt or sweatshirt. Um, this could be like billboards or signs or something. Keep track, just keep a rolling tally somewhere, you know, on your phone or in your head or something of how many advertisements you see in one single day, um, which contributes to our desire to want more. Um, and then at the end of the day, or maybe the next day, I kind of the next step that you could take is to spend per, per advertisement you saw one minute in God's word to help retrain your eyes to see light and to see God where it is so easy to see excess and greed and money. Um, and I think I'm going to try this and let you know how it goes. So if anybody tries it with me, um, let me know how it goes. And I'll see you guys later this week.